even in uh, medicine, that is a really big uh, thing, uh, there is uh, a revolution and is the PNE, Psycho, Neuro, Endocrine Revolution. So let's uh, uh, see what is, uh, and just let's take this picture because it's really uh, important. Uh, this uh, is a picture of a human cell and in this uh, human cell there are all the uh, activity uh, of the main uh, neurotransmitter of the brain and hormones and all the receiver, the place in the cell that is receiving those. This is really looking like a, neuro, a neuron, a cell of the brain, but it's not a brain cell, it's just a blood cell, a white blood cell. Uh, this means that before uh, the old tradition were dividing, uh, the old dichotomic paradigm was dividing all pieces of the body anatomically and in functionally. So we have uh, a, a very strong straight division between nervous system, immune system, endocrine system and psycho, uh, the channel, psychology of, uh, of man. Uh, now this bridge has really collapsed. Let's go a little through the story. So we can start with Candice Pert. Uh, Candice Pert was a um, National Institute for Mental Health researcher and she was one of the main uh, scientists who discovered endorphin, the molecule of ecstasy and neuropeptide and uh, she started to study this and to understand that these were molecules of emotions. And lately she, s she said that more than emotion, they are molecules of information, of consciousness. And um, Candice Pert uh, was a friend. Uh, she came here six years ago in our center. We stay here many days. She participated at some our lecture and uh, conference. And uh, she was really open as a scientist. She was doing meditation, she was doing a lot of uh, holistic health and experience in uh, new psychology and uh, human growth. So uh, she is the one that started to talk about a psychosomatic network. He published a famous article that uh, there is no more separation between mind, body and consciousness. We must think about human being as a psychosomatic network. And it's basically the same as uh, Edelman's uh, discovery. It was the same like uh, there is not one uh, piece of brain that is uh, creating consciousness. Consciousness is a network. So there is no such a division between the body and the mind. We should consider human being and a network and uh, we can see now uh, she was uh, studying and she discovered that even in a in a protozoa like this one uh, there are basically all the neurotransmitter and hormone that we have in the brain even one of the most precious one endorphin uh, many neuroscience, many uh, chemical and uh, neurotransmitter or hormones are giving pleasure, like uh, serotonin is giving a kind of body pleasure, uh, oxytocin is giving the pleasure of being together, of affectivity, of love, uh, dopamine is giving us the pleasure of play, of enthusiasm, uh, sexual hormones give us the sexual pleasure. But there is one hormone that is basically a global pleasure, and this is endorphin. When we have higher level of endorphin, then we have a kind of ecstasy. Um, and um, so from the down of life, we share the same emotion and the same basic consciousness. This, uh, we found this uh, 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 statement even before by other scientists and neuroscientists. And that means that many are discovering the same root of our existence and consciousness. Uh, so, uh, in the 64, George Solomon was a prof professor at the Standard University, Stanford uh, uh, and Los Angeles. Um, and he coined the term psychoimmunology. That means the, the mind, our psychic uh, 
uh, field our psychic uh, uh, energy can uh, alter, can have an effect, effect on our immune system. And this is a big deal that means that if we are happy or sad, we can influence our uh, immune response. And this was the first very important step. And then, uh, basically 10 years later, Adder and uh, Nicholas Cohen, they were, um, one, uh, he was a psychologist and he was an immunologist of um, uh, the Rochester University. And they did some experiment uh, showing that uh, there is a psychoneuroimmunology. They saw that there is not just from mind and emotion a direct connection, but the, the, the connection is between the nervous system, the mind, the human mind, the human emotion uh, uh, complexity, and the immune system. So three uh, places were getting together. And at the end, uh, in, the 80, in 84, Blalock was a physiologist of Alabama University, and he published the immune system as a sensory organ and uh, showing interaction between the nervous uh, endocrine and immune system altogether. Uh, he discovered this uh, uh, very important uh, present inside the white blood cell of uh, everything. So he said the, white, uh, the, the, the blood is a nervous system, a fluid system. So this is a, a revolution. So many sectors that were separating from each other in medicine and you were studying them in different books without any connection, then shows that all human being is one network. So the first idea of uh, uh, Candice Pert were absolutely right. So let's see, it's like if this, the self, our center of our self-consciousness, can move our psychological dimension, our neurological brain dimension, uh, can uh, move our endocrine and immune system. Those uh, systems are moving and altering and uh, having effect on the epigenetic that is uh, differentiating and, uh, and uh, acting on, the, on a, on a um, genetic level. So the self is the real center of uh, all our being. We can say the self, like all Chinese, they will call it the self, the emperor, the empress of the whole uh, system of all our being. Uh, now we prefer instead of uh, emperor or empress uh, just to call it a, a governor, maybe a good government uh, of the whole uh, psychosomatic uh, network and being. So now we can go a little deeper and see the psychosomatic paradigm in electroencephalography. Uh, let's remember that electroencephalography is already a, a field between doctor medicine and psychology. So with electroencephalography you can deal with some medical uh, disease and some psychological disease. And uh, there is a EEG coherence. Let's remember the two friends of us uh, that discovered that the coherence is the pattern to create a unity of information, a unity of consciousness, to create some uh, system that is highly coherent. And uh, quantum coherence is reflected in the whole human electromagnetic field. Re just remember, when we are in medicine, we, wa we want to know uh, our body, if it's functioning in, uh, in a well way or not, then we do electrocardiography, electroencephalography, electromyography, and uh, we are studying the blood, all the... Uh, the main uh, pH, uh, uh, acidity or alkalinity of the blood or the, of the urine are all basically uh, electro uh, electromagnetic uh, expression. So let's see uh, what happens when we measure the EG coherence 
And uh, before doing that, let's imagine our quantum electromagnetic field. We start in the small experience, direct experience of consciousness, just to feel our body, to feel the center, the axis of our body, and soon we will do the next, uh, uh, the next uh, experience, to just, we will start to feel the whole uh, field. Uh, the field have been measured up to 15 meters around the body with the squid that are very sophisticated uh, electromagnetic uh, uh, devices. Um, and just imagine that, uh, which, like every field, the field is going all over, is going to the whole system. So we basically, through our system, we are connecting with other people and we are receiving to give the same energy, our energy, to them and to the world. Um, this uh, field uh, is done by three steps, like uh, body energy, uh, emotional energy and mind energy. So we can stop, what? but if we stop our uh, physical uh, uh, center, then we stop the whole turning, the whole movement of the energy. So if we stop the heart, we can stop the whole circulation and the whole field get back, get shrinked get very close. So by understanding the energetic uh, quantum uh, electromagnetic field, we can really understand something very deep and precious. So, let's see. Uh, Hameroff, uh, is a Stuart Hameroff uh, is a, uh, a, a very important uh, scholar that have been done a lot of medical and uh, uh, brain research. And in, uh, in uh, collaboration with uh, um, Penrose, that is a very well-known physicist, the quantum physicist, uh, they uh, propose a different vision of consciousness. And they say, well, um, the old theory, the old physical theory cannot explain consciousness. In order to explain consciousness, we need a quantum consciousness theory. So uh, a, con a, a theory of consciousness that starts from this entanglement, from this basically connection. We saw in the brain the consciousness as a network, in the body as a psychosomatic network, but this means that uh, this entanglement in the brain, in the body and from outside is a basic, the, 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 the main thing. And they uh, talk about coherence, gamma, synchronic, e.g. Uh, we demonstrate that uh, most of their hypotheses are absolutely scientifically right. So let's see some of our uh, main research on brain e.g. and on couple, on mother and uh, daughter, on uh, people doing meditation. And um, just let's see coherent wave, photon coherent, uh, sorry, coherent wave, like in a uh, laser beam, and non-coherence. Uh, and in the brain is the same. In the brain we can have a very high coherence between different parts of the brain. That means that the waves, like in this uh, line, they are completely uh, synchronized. Or we can have the same way, but in, as in a mirror, in phase opposition. That means one is got up and the other goes down. That means conflict. And or they can go completely on their own, so there is no uh, coherence, uh, zero coherence. So let's go through and just see some picture. This is the brain of a person, right hemisphere, left hemisphere. In the red one are the, 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 the delta waves, the yellow the theta waves, green the alpha, and the beta 1, beta 2, and beta 3. And we see this, uh, a person that is uh, evidently the right hemisphere and the left hemisphere are completely different. So the coherence in the brain area are basically zero. Here in the middle is zero. Up here is 100% uh, positive, and this is 100% negative, phase opposition. And just see 
another person that is doing self-consciousness uh, uh, meditation and the synchronicity uh, is getting to 96 uh, percent coherence and uh, moreover we can see inside not only they are similar the left and the right the feminine and the masculine let's imagine that this is the mind this in the middle is the heart and this uh, is the body and there is an incredible uh, uh, harmonic wave that, that goes all through the neural axis so the all physical emotional and uh, mental state are in harmony that's absolutely incre uh, incredible when we did this kind of research we were on Himalaya and we did it on people meditating over in the mountain and we say oh god uh, we 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 do just some mistake is not possible that the brain could uh, uh, perform some harmonic wave this must be a mistake but after many uh, uh, research we say well it's really true the brain is uh, creating harmonic way in the whole system and so we did some experiment on uh, several hundred people and we saw that the coherence electromagnetic coherence between uh, uh, I mean uh, in severe in people with severe depression were basically 20 percent of coherence in mild depression were doubling 40 percent coherence in light depression that means basically every every one of us we are all little depressed uh, there grow to 50 percent and uh, a little more in normal people, what we call it normal well-being, and rise up uh, almost to 80% in people who are doing meditation. So self-consciousness uh, is uh, directly, uh, uh, is a very important tool for uh, health and for human uh, uh, growth. Um, that's why uh, if we understand that uh, the old pattern, the old paradigm, were a divided paradigm, was, were dichotomic. Each part of the system are seen as alone, not collaborating, not uh, entangled by, uh, on each other. Uh, when we do uh, self-consciousness, we create a center, and this center is able to connect the old brain as oneness as a whole so uh, when the people are uh, too much on the left uh, 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 on the left side of the brain the rational part they become too dry too strong too straight if they are on the other part on the feminine they get too much in uh, you know spaced out and uh, artistic people not uh, uh, seeing may maybe sometimes the reality when they are very uh, uh, strongly connected with the body uh, uh, energy and with the, let's say, body self, uh, body consciousness, they become uh, uh, very materialistic, very instinctive, sometimes very aggressive, very down to earth, too much sometimes. When they are on the contrary, on the higher part and they activated only the higher part, they become these uh, people, spiritual people, uh, new age people, really up uh, no, uh, and really uh, we have all this part and our life must be an integral part, an integral life. When we do self-awareness, the whole brain get together and we get all these different dimension in a wholeness, in an integral uh, being. And this is really important. So self-consciousness is the real tool to shift from the old paradigm to a new paradigm. And uh, what is happening uh, is uh, a change of vision of the world. If you see, uh, I met uh, uh, last year, uh, Fridge of Capra, we do a, a conference uh, together. And I asked him, listen, tell me a little more about the, the beginning of your famous uh, book, uh, The Tao of Physics. What happened really? He said, it was an incredible moment. I was just divided. 
like a part of my mind was a scientific part and the other one was a mystic part you know i read about uh, uh, you know indian philosophy and all of a sudden i was there and the two sides of my being get together and i see this existence as material and spiritual like a, an intelligent energy that flow together and I was flowing with the existence and I was breathing and my body was uh, the same particle of light and everything was dancing. So when this uh, moment of self-awareness, of integrity happened, you change your world. And instead of seeing the thing in a separate way, you just did the oneness of existence and you are part of it. Let's see what happens when two beings, two human beings, but every being can be a dog and a man or a, a tree and a woman. Uh, what happens when the field get together? Sometimes we stand close to a tree or we are uh, close to a, a dog and we feel so much presence and uh, joy and uh, connection. Uh, once in, uh, we were saying we are on the same web, you know, on the same vibe, good vibration. Okay, this is uh, the scientific demonstration of the good vibration. So, two people can be two friends, can be mother and daughter, and we can see when the people, like in this case, are close, they are just friends on a bar, just talking about, let's say, nothing, and uh, the two left hemisphere and the two right hemisphere were uh, studied together and the coherence between them was basically zero. So it's not enough just to meet with somebody. You need something more to get really in touch with him and to get on the same, let's say, vibe. Uh, these are two people uh, meditating together, close to each other, with eyes closed. They didn't know that we were studying the cross uh, brain uh, coherence and look at that the coherence between the, the two left uh, and left and two right and right hemisphere grows to 84 70 uh, uh, 78 percent so something that looks really incredible but it happened and this is happening with our mother and if our mother is really full of love then she's giving us some feeling of love of touch of uh, looking at us of recognition, of uh, tenderness, and we grow and we feel to be connected. And maybe our mother was really seriously engaged in their own uh, trip or work or uh, stress or depression or anxiety. And the baby is just seeing, and maybe the mother is really loving, but there is not this kind of empathy, this kind of feeling. So this is a very, very important uh, point that we, for the first time in, uh, in, uh, in scientific research, we demonstrated. So let's go to the collective uh, field coherence. Uh, we all know that sometime we are with some friend we in a family, or even maybe here in Italy at the Scala to listen uh, a, a, a symphony, and we feel part of the whole uh, theater of the whole uh, uh, experience uh, can be, um, I don't know, uh, something uh, for art, uh, for uh, uh, sport, uh, a, a Olympic uh, game. But sometimes we feel that we are connected. We feel one uh, group, one family, one uh, uh, deep connection. And uh, this, uh, that is our experience, was never, have never been demonstrated scientifically. So we did it. And just imagine that all different uh, people with, let's say, we, we choose different color for each of them, can be just living nearby, close to each other, with no connection, as basically is happening in every uh, city, in every uh, house. People are living then, they don't know each other, they just say hello, hello. 
But what happens if we open a different consciousness, a different intensity, uh, uh, our empathy? This is what is happening. These are the, the brain coherence between 12 people, 12 persons. And we can see here, before doing uh, a self-consciousness uh, uh, experiment, and you see all of them is one line, one uh, EG for each one, and they were basically all different. People are working, every person is on his own, nobody is really connected. But we just ask them, as we do in this uh, uh, small experiment of uh, feeling ourselves, just open your heart, close your eyes, just feel your body, your breath, and all of a sudden we say, okay, just feel the whole group. We are here, we are doing an experiment. It's a very important experiment. We can demonstrate that something real can connect us. It's not just a philosophy or a spiritual uh, believing system. And this is what happened. And we see the people going up to 71, 61, uh, uh, 73, 82 percent of coherence, group coherence. Someone a little more, someone a little less, but we all were feeling to be one group. And this is the beginning of our uh, uh, let's say, uh, hopefully, future life, uh, to understand how to reach this uh, state of connection means we can teach people to create this in school, uh, in, uh, in university, in your work, in your family. Sometimes family are completely one opposite to each other. So just to understand the rule and the laws of this uh, unity, of this uh, uh, coexistence, cooperation is really important. This is the very root of uh, the, the possible uh, um, global uh, society, a global sustainable peaceful society. We don't do, this is like doing war, this is like making peace. And uh, we, in the last uh, 30 years, we start to discover the laws that can govern exactly this uh, unity, this uh, uh, intensity. And uh, we saw that uh, if we don't open our heart, this uh, synchronization does not happen. So we learn that we need at least two things. First, people have to open the belly, the heart and the mind. They have to feel back again to their own integrity. Uh, basically, opening the mind means uh, the people have to work on their own past uh, bad experience, bad emotional uh, uh, memories, because uh, bad experience is closing our heart. And if the heart that is the center of the whole field, if the heart is closed, the, you cannot have a field. You cannot, you cannot enjoy, you cannot create a, a, a collective brain coherence. Uh, then the second step over the, the heart is uh, consciousness. So the second step is uh, first open your heart, then know yourself. And this uh, we try in, in 30 year uh, experiment, a lot of practice from Eastern and Western tradition, new tradition. And uh, we saw that the most easy way is uh, what we call it uh, the psychosomatic mindfulness. And we did a protocol. And in the last uh, lesson, the 10th lesson, we will uh, show you the effect of this protocol just on small kids, on people that have never done any kind of self-aware technique. And this is so easy. And it just in 12 hours, in a school, 12 hours is basically nothing. But in school, even kids of six years can learn very easily in two, three hours how to get together. And uh, we have done a lot of uh, statistical, clinical uh, research on that. And just few, uh, this 12 hours, that is very short, uh, 
uh, uh, program in, in education have done a lot of change. Uh, the children or the young uh, 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 people or the adult are getting together. They feel to be one class. They feel that they can open, they can trust each other. They start to collaborate even with the teacher or with the other people. So just in 12 hours, we change something very precious from inside. This is our protocol and we really can uh, uh, provide a, a, a wild extension and teaching for uh, everyone because this is uh, really, really important. But first we have to do this in ourselves. The creation of a collective field starts from ourselves. First we have to get uh, in our field to feel who we are to feel our integrity, to get in a process of, uh, uh, let's say, um, personal growth and uh, get free from all past uh, memories and emotion, negative emotion that are getting blocked. Uh, they are blocking our energy, our psychosomatic network. So this is the first step. So let's start from ourselves, and now we can do just a small experiment, direct experiment on this uh, field that is really important. So now we will get this uh, experience of the energy consciousness of our body. And uh, uh, if you can do this uh, experience with some friend, it will be perfect. Even four, five friends that are connected, that are interested in that. Otherwise, you can start alone and then you will experience with some other people. Um, the energy field of every human being is very strong. And uh, we just feel it but definitely we don't know exactly that we are feeling the energy. When we talk about energy, we talk about sensation, body sensation. So energy is not something like, you know, transcendental or uh, uh, immaterial. It's very material, it's an electromagnetic. If it's too high, you, you, you take a wire and you get you know, uh, uh, an electricity in your body. Uh, we are full of energy and the energy is flowing all over the body, in the, fl in the breath, uh, in the blood, in, in every field. So I will uh, let you know how to see that we are feeling some different energy in our body. So let's close our eyes. Um, just a second before closing eyes. Let's then when we close the eyes, do this kind of movement, like breathing, opening the chest. Okay, let's close our eyes. Just get relaxed. And let's feel the whole body breathing, even the belly, the chest, the spine. And just let listen the flux of the flux of air, the stream of breathing coming into the nose. All the sensation is energy. Just feel the air coming in. You in usually is a, a little cold. When it's getting out is a little warm. The electric, electromagnetic spectrum have a, a infrared that is heating and ultraviolet that is more cold. Let's feel is energy. Each atom like uh, like oxygen and have a, an electromagnetic polarity, 
an electromagnetic charge. So let's feel the energy flowing in the nose, in the head. Ah, let's open the mouth. Let's feel all the throat, all the uh, neck, the cervical vertebra. Let's breathe. And let's open our chest, our lungs. And now let's do the same exercise. We put our hands on our legs and let's feel just the energy of the hands as they are. And just feel all the, the two hands are exactly the same. You feel them exactly big, the same, the same space, the same size. Maybe just take the hands uh, 20 centimeters, 20 inches in front of your face without touching the face and just feel both the hands are equal. You feel the same sensation, energy, or one is bigger than the other. One have more energy. Okay, let's take down the hand with uh, more energy. And let's uh, take your uh, fist. Let's just move in a strong way your fingers, your hand. Just breathe in your hand, the one that was less charged. If they were together, is okay. Open all the hand, close strong all your hand. Do it several times, feel it. Stretch your arm. Ah, and then let's take up the other hand. Something has changed. The hands are definitely equal, but can you feel that one hand, the one you move, is, uh, you feel bigger than the other, or slightly more charged than the other? We can call it feeling, we can call it energy, we can call it uh, prana or chi or whatever you like or electromagnetic field is exactly the same, the same thing. So just by moving our body, we can create more energy and feel more energy. Now let's go down to the belly. Let's relax our spine. Let's feel our legs and feet down to the earth. And again, as the last time, let's feel the whole body like a balloon made on the shape of our body. Like the skin is a balloon the shape of the skin and but is breathing. Inflation, relaxation, pulsation. And now I ask you not to move for one, two minutes. Just be relaxed and still. And just feel all the skin breathing, all the body, the energy body, quantum electromagnetic body breathing. Uh, 
And uh, if you see, if you listen to your sensation, you can perceive that your energy, your breathing energy, your living energy, is even all around your arm and legs and uh, belly and chest. You start to feel the field. and relax even more, feel your breath as an energy field all around like a, an egg of energy, like a field of energy. If you open a little bit more your heart and you enjoy this moment, and you relax, then the field probably gets better, gets stronger. Don't move, breathe. And I just want to ask you, where your energy ends? Where your energy finished? How large is the sensation of your field? Sometimes just maybe a few inches, a few centimeters. Sometimes a little more. Be silent. Enjoy. And just for a second, feel the whole room you are in. The whole room. And, is, and if there is other people in the room, just feel their energy and your energy in silence. Open your heart and feel the connection. And when we do this exercise and we connect all the brain of the people to uh, an electroencephalogram, we can see that slowly the coherence gets higher and higher. We are getting more synchronized. It's something we, that we can learn in just a few hours of exercise. Very good. Sometimes in the beginning you don't feel much of your field. It's just a question of uh, doing some more time and getting really in a silent space. And you can do it even with your partner, with your uh, daughter or son with your beloved. Sometimes even just staying close to each other, hugging each other. No need to do anything. And you can remember how many times our fields get united, get synchronized, melted. And if it's not melting, then we feel sad. If the feeling with our mother, with our lover, if it's not open, then we feel alone.
but just feel that we are one with existence. We are never alone. We can just think to be alone. We are part of this vast existence, of this uh, infinite wholeness. Mm, very good. And then, slowly, let's open our eyes. And for a second, let's remain in this uh, feeling of openness, even with eyes open. Experience. Try some experience in, in your life, alone, together, in some maybe quiet place. And slowly you will learn how to enter the experience of the field. Okay, very good. We can end this lesson.